Okay, wanna play a game? We're gonna see if this works. So I'm going to do my best to answer some of your burning questions. And when I say you, some of you submitted a question, but when I answer a question for one, it's gonna answer a question for many. Hence why I am trying this style of video. Okay, this may or may not work. I can't say I love this format, but we're gonna give it a shot. Okay, there are some rules to the game. So I have eight questions but there are rules. Number one, I am no guru. I have been doing this for 15 years, this being helping you all move through challenges and create what you want with less struggle. I am a seasoned practitioner. I know what I'm doing, but I'm no guru. You're actually the guru. Within you is the innate wisdom, is the intelligence, is the next right answer. And my work is to simply assist you in reconnecting that. If there's a gap or if there's been a break, my work is to provide you tools and support and resources and community to help this happen. Okay, number two, answering your question is speaking to a lot of different people. So thanks for asking. When you heal, we all heal and that is what I want. This may not be the answer, but it could be a answer. I may challenge your beliefs, but why is that a bad thing? Okay, question number one. I'm gonna scoot over so I can post the question. What are some special tips to overcome my fear of being myself in front of others? Okay, tip one, you may want to define being myself. What is being myself? What is self? What does it look like, feel like, smell like, taste like, and sound like? So please define for yourself, what is that experience or what would you like that experience to be? Because my definition of being myself and your definition of being yourself are going to be very different. Second part to that is my family basically raised me to not act as myself and there was a lot of shaming. I'm sorry about that. If you wanted to take it a step further, start practicing this. Start becoming this future identity, this person that you want to become in the privacy or your home, own home and space, like without friends, without family. Start getting to know this for yourself first with yourself and then consciously practice it out in public. If you're at a cafe or a grocery store, like start to be this self more and then just expand from there. And what's really interesting, self and belonging are highly uh, connected. So as a little one, you're little, I think you're a man. The little guy was just doing his best to fit in and to belong. And the fact that the family shamed you, that's just, that's really quite painful. I'm not shaming your family, but you know. Question two, what is the saying, prayer, or metaphor that has helped you the most in life to persevere through times of intense adversity? Beautiful question, thank you very much. For me, it usually sounds like, what would love do? That is something that I often ask myself is what would love do? How would love respond to this or that or you know the challenges of the world? Like how would love respond? What would love do? And then I think something else I often say is it's all workable. And what I mean specifically, the beliefs and the challenges that we experience, the fears and all that sort of stuff, I, I truly believe that it's all workable. It can all be respectfully revised and changed so that I, we, you can have the best outcome in life. It just takes a certain skill set. So it's all workable. It's all workable. Like if I'm challenged and I'm like, I have no idea how to figure this out, I get help. I call practitioners that I work with. I reach out to friends and, you know, spiritual teachers and I, I don't, try and do it alone. I get help. In terms of prayer, I guess the last thing is I go into nature a lot. I am lucky to live with access to some true wilderness. And so for me, when I'm really trying to get right, you know, I, I go into nature and I usually come, out, come back or come out a better person. Okay, next question is what is embracing? Now for context, I posted uh, what we resist persist and what we can turn into and embrace, we heal. And the person said, what's embracing? But here's what, and let me move over to make sure. What they did say that caught my eye is, I resist our current world and have so much hatred and resentment towards it. I'm just gonna say, I feel you. 
I really feel you. Personal story, mm, two years ago, I went on sabbatical with my husband for a year and we did a lot of traveling and exploring and it was the most beautiful and heartbreaking experience and I completely lost my faith in humanity. Just seeing how people function and how people around the world treat the environment and treat each other and animals and I was just like, y'all, we really could be doing better. And for me, it was the start of some real deep inquiry and like soul searching. And I reached out to a friend of mine and because I was really at my wits end, feeling very something very similar as to how are we so intelligent and like so resourceful living on planet Earth, yet like we act the way that we do. And my friend said back to me, put the lost faith in humanity into self-improvement, self-empowerment, and consciousness. He said, humanity is unconscious ego. I don't know if that makes sense. So I was like, okay. So what I really started to do from that point forward was to take care of myself and to really start to figure out for myself, what, how did I want to serve now? What were the problems that I wanted to help solve? Sometimes someone says like, you have to sweep your own porch first. So, you know, if it's putting attention back on your life so that you can become the person that you want to need now, that might be a great invitation, but I'm super glad that you asked this question. And I, you know, there are times where I really wish, really wish we could be doing better. Actually, it's one of the reasons why I started this channel because I was like, who's leading whom? Like, this is a shit show. We need people showing up and serving humanity and leading people towards some better outcome. And it is actually, it was the pain as to what you're talking about, having lost my own faith in humanity that inspired me to start the channel and do this work with you all. So I don't know if that makes sense, but that's what I came up with. Okay, next question. Helping others with this. I'm not exactly sure, I can't remember the context, but how do I do for others with their paths? I'm reading it as how do I help others with the path of self-enlightenment or kind of, you know, self-development. I think that's what you mean. I would say in reply that we can only do the work for ourselves. We cannot and should not do the work for others specifically. It's not, it's not appropriate and it's not right. Uh, you may not like that, but now with that said, if there is something in you that wants to help others get on a better path, find a problem, any problem, and participate in being the solution. That's one way in which you can help others on their path. Okay, uh, next one. I need some water. Ooh, how can I be more proactive instead of riding the stream of life and letting it go wherever it wants to take me? I have a hard time making decisions. I procrastinate. Really, you too? No, I'm kidding. But the last line, I think I need some more time to think. I actually don't think you need more time to think. This thing can go in circles. I think what you need is more time doing. Get in the field, start taking action, no more thinking. I mean, not no more thinking, but it sounds like you've, if you want, your question is I want to be more proactive. That is cluing, your language is cluing me into that you actually know the solution. The solution is taking action. So to take courageous, bold action, start doing the things that you know you need to do with your life, however big or small, please consider your own safety and everyone else's safety. But what you could do, I'm gonna read this to you, is to look at your past. Imagine your past is back here and say, you know what? Thank you for everything. My destiny is calling me forward. And I, I must, I must get on with it. I must engage with my life and I must do the things that I know I have to do. And if you have to put fear in a headlock and just drag it along with you, that's probably what you need to do. Because there gets to a point in life where you just, you gotta take fear and be like, you know what, we're going this way. We're going towards the destiny with greatest respect for the past and Destiny is calling you forward. Put fear in that headlock and start doing what you know you need to do, step by step, little by little. 
But I would say get your hiney moving. No more thinking, doing. Courageous action is going to help you have the most magnificent life. Maybe last question I'm gonna be, I don't know if you're still watching this, hopefully you are. This guy here, I think it's a man. My situation is probably very unique. I've asked a lot of people, very perplexed. I'll try and be brief. I tried everything under the sun to get better from my panic attacks, depression, despair, sadness, and unfortunately it's not really working. So first thing, thank you for taking care of yourself and trying a lot of different things. If what you're trying or have tried hasn't worked in the way that you want, please find better practitioners, different practitioners or better tools. I am a uh, master NLP practitioner. What I do is very different than coaching or therapy. I have great respect for those people, what they do. It just might mean you need something different. So I would recommend trying some different things. Family constellations are profoundly helpful at bringing to light things that we just cannot seem to heal or to fix no matter how hard we have tried. Family constellations come from, well, come through Bert Hellinger. He spent some time in Africa long ago and noticed, I, I don't remember where he was in Africa, Zulu tribe. He spent a lot of time with the Zulu tribe and he took what his experience was and adapted it. And now we have family constellations. Again, all help is good help. Oh my God, my leg fell asleep. Ooh. Okay, last question. How can one successfully build a path towards and using spirituality after a dark night of the soul? That's a great question. That's a good, that's a good question. Well, before I even try to answer the question, I was talking with a friend actually this morning and she said to me, there's so much beauty in the darkness. Everyone wants to reject it. And I was like, dude, I know. If we could just turn into and face the thing, face the fear, face the pain, there is so much freedom and so much healing just on the other side. So how can one successfully build a path after a dark night of the soul? I mean, the question that I wanna ask you is what would you like? With respect to the past, what did you learn from the dark night of the soul and who have you become as a result of the dark night of the soul? Because the darkness is, is where we grow. We need, we need contrast. We need light. We need dark. We need expansion and contraction. We need something to push back on or how else would we grow? So we want to respect the dark. And what would you like? What would you like now? With respect to the past, what would you like? And what would having that do for you? And I would say if you just chew on what I just said to you, you'll probably start to see the path unfold. Okay, in closing, I'm gonna invite you to do two things. One, down in the description, you'll find some resources, a newsletter that you can join. It's not sleazy. If you'd like to join a more in-depth conversation and community and to hear about events and stuff, please join the newsletter. And then a quote from my personal, one of my heroes, Dr. Gabor Mate. We may not be responsible for the way the world creates our mind, but we can learn to take responsibility for the mind with which we create the world. This is your friend, Ash. Good day, good night to wherever you are in the world. I hope this is useful. Can't promise you I'll do another one of these. The format is kind of funky and it takes a ton of time. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Good day, good night. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.